everyone. This is Amanda from DevotionInAction.com, and we're here at Hebrews 11, and this is the Bright Bible. I got to do this really cool thing. I signed up in the fall to participate in this touring Bright Bible. Right inside, it has like a little card that gives you instructions, and you sign up to do one or two pages, and um, in the back, then you put the date and your name, where you're from, and what Bible reference you did. Um, on this page, I went ahead and used uh, Matte Gel Medium to prep the page, and that is mainly just, I just did one layer on it. That's mainly because I knew that someone else is going to come along and do the other side of this page, and so I wanted to make sure that I didn't bleed through and cause problems for someone else's entry. Um, it is, I am going to use watercolors. I've already traced, uh, well, no, I just drew it. <laughs> But you could trace it. I'll, I'll try to provide a, a printable for you guys to trace if you'd like to trace this um, graphic of a giraffe and a quote on here. And then I'm just kind of hitting it with a heat tool really quickly to dry out that because I'm impatient and I wanted to go ahead and get to painting on this and outlining um, uh, this uh, Bible art journaling right here. And it says on there, let your faith be taller than your your fears. You may know that Hebrews 11 is uh, called the faith chapter by a lot of people. And it's because in the beginning, the first three verses, it kind of introduces this topic of faith and tells what it's about. Um, and I've just got kind of a medium sized brush, not super pointy on the end. It's pretty round. Um, and I'm taking some uh, kind of a golden color, tannish golden color. Uh, and and starting with that as the base color for my giraffe. Now, you'll notice that I'm, I'm going to leave some white space. I'm not going all the way to the edges of my, of my pencil markings there. I'm not going to color in everything with this color because I'm going to come around, come along with other colors and some of them I'll layer on top of this and some of them I will add in in different spots. But as you can see, I'm just gonna just gonna add different kind of shades of it. I'm gonna add some really light and some other, leaving some white space, and it, and kind of protecting that white space. It really adds something to a watercolor. I when I learned this, it really in, hmm <laughs> can't talk today. Sorry guys, it really improved how I felt about my watercolor results. So when I started leaving a little bit of white space, um, see like I have at the top of the giraffe's head where it kind of dips into that valley right above uh, the, where it goes down to the nose, in the ears, you know, just leaving some of that white space really, um, just really improves the look of, of the end product. I'm adding just a real loose base for the hair that's going to come off the back of the neck of the giraffe there in that gold as well. And uh, what I want to do is add in some different colors. I I'm, was playing around with the color of the tongue that I wanted to do and I wasn't quite sure exactly. Um, and I wanted to add some um, shadowing under the nostrils. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go completely black there or not. I'm going to take in some black and work on the eyes because I know that it'll take uh, several several coats to get it to the color black that I want. It always looks black when you're putting it on and then um, the black watercolor kind of dries grayish. So if you want a truer black, you've got to use better paint, uh, less water, or multiple coats <laughs> to get that true black. Um, it's going to dry out pretty light gray the first time around if you're just kind of doing it like you use other like you do for other colors. And then um, then you can add in extra coats to get to the black that you want. And in general, watercoloring, this is my number one tip for anyone who's starting out watercoloring. Start at your lightest color. Think about your picture and what you want it to look like in the end and then see what is your lightest color and put that one down first and then build layers of color on top of it. Um, sometimes you will want that base layer or a layer in between to dry all the way so that the colors don't run as much. Sometimes you'll want them to dry a little bit so they run a little bit and sometimes you want them to run together and kind of mix together and you kind of get a feel with that feel for that the more you play around with watercolors. Watercolors have become my go-to. When I first started Bible art journaling, it was always colored pencils. I liked colored pencils the best and I have some really nice colored pencils. I probably need to do that more often. 
um, now. But when I found watercolors and started playing around with them, I really, really, really enjoy watercoloring in my Bible. And so and most, of the, most of the time, you do not have to prep the page for watercolor, especially in a traditional Bible uh, journal. Now, I like to prep my page in my Illustrating Bible by Dayspring because the texture of the page is different and it sucks up the water much more readily than a traditional Bible page does. There's a little bit of a slickness to a tra traditional Bible page that uh, allows the water to sit on it and you can play around with it a, lo a little bit longer. Uh, but the real fibrous nature of the Dayspring Illustrating Bible page is fantastic for some other things, like some other mediums, but I like to prep those pages so that the water sits on them a little longer and I have time to play around with um, it while it's wet. If it soaks in immediately, you get harder edges on your watercolor instead of softer edges. And I just, I, I, I like the extra time. Um, maybe if I was super quick, I, I would, uh, I'd be okay with it without the prepping that page, but uh, I like to do that. You wouldn't have to here. I just wanted to be extra careful since this is not actually my Bible. It's someone else's. And um, it is going to travel on to the next person who might want to do the page on the other side of mine. Okay, so here I, I, I've seen this quote. Uh, Let your faith be taller than your fears with a giraffe uh, in a lot of different places. If you search it online, you'll see they make keychains and cups. And, and I, I looked to see if I could figure out who origi originated it, and I couldn't. So if you know, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear um, who this is so I can give them credit where credit is due. It is certainly not original to me. I did not come up with this idea. Um, and when I was thinking about what I wanted to do in my New Testament... Spoiler alert, uh, upcoming you'll have a video and one from my Old Testament because I signed up for to do two pages in the Bright Bible, um, an Old Testament and a New Testament. My New Testament, I wanted to do something about the faith chapter. So I love this chapter in Hebrews. It starts out talking about the concept of faith in the first three verses. And it says, now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. For by this our ancestors were approved. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen is made from things that are not visible. And after it introduces that idea of what faith is, then it goes into these little snippets, stories of Bible heroes, and how their lives showed that they lived by faith. Okay, here you'll see um, that I'm adding in a little bit more definition to those strands of hair coming up from the back of the neck, making it look a little bit more like the tufts of hair on the tops of um, the giraffe's head, and adding in just that kind of that texture it, with a much smaller, pointier brush where I can add in a little bit more detail in that. And I wanted to kind of add a little bit more of that, that look, um, a little more texture throughout this giraffe. He's, just kind of play around with it until you get it like you want it to be, you know? <laughs> you just kind of kind of mess with it, add some some shadowing where the light would not be shining on on directly onto the giraffe. And you'll see it's not super super defined at the moment. Now, I know that I'm going to come along at the end of this once it's all dry and I'm going to outline all of my pencil marks and go over them in black pen to really give it some definition. Uh, but I'm just looking for all of those places where you might see shadowing, where we need more color or more depth to the color. Like these blacks are just really not, not dark enough for me at the moment. So I'm just coming back and like I told you, you have to have another, another layer on that, another layer of that, that dark black. And you kind of want to just look around and see where does it not look quite right to you and keep playing with that area. So I, I really love that when it talks about these heroes of the Bible in Hebrews 11, they're not perfect people. Many of these Bible heroes were scared of something, just like I am sometimes. They were overwhelmed or exhausted or terrified, and yet they trusted God. They believed what he said. They made mistakes, sometimes gigantic mistakes, just like I do sometimes. But they didn't give up. They kept coming back and trying again. And that spirit of keep coming back, 
keep trying again, keep listening, keep believing that God means what he says, help them to rise above all the others who fell away until their faith was tall enough for us to see centuries later reflected in these stories in Hebrews. And as I was, I was reading it and kind of um, contemplating this, I, I loved that idea of, of longing for a bigger, a deeper, a taller faith. Something that can see with God's perspective uh, the things and the people that come into my life. And now I'm just uh, deciding that it looked a little, I don't know, disconnected from the page to have the giraffe and the quote just sitting there. So I'm adding a little bit of blue sky, not super dark or over overwhelming, just kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit of a background to this page so that it looks all cohesive. That's the word I'm trying to think of. <laughs> all, all kind of cohesive um, and together, not like that giraffe is just kind of sitting on top of that uh, white space on the page. Um, and I, whenever I do a bl blue sky, water, anything like that, I like to add multiple color colors to it. So a little bit of purple in with some of the blue, not to really change it just kind of changes the hue of it, changes the tone just a little bit in certain places. So that it's not all samey samey. It doesn't look too, uh, too flat, I guess. So um, not really dark, just a little bit. And then I'm noticing that I'm not quite happy with some of the areas on my, on my draft. Like uh, the left side, much, much darker than the right side. It wasn't, I, there wasn't, um, a real kind of a line along that upper line of the ear to give the depth that I wanted with the shadowing underneath it. I um, am also noticing that, that there's not a lot of definition on these eyebrows, the giraffe's eyebrows there. And I thought it would be fun to have a few hairs in that valley in between the, the two peaks on top of the giraffe head and a little bit of shadowing down here where there's the bottom jaw of the giraffe kind of sticking out with its tongue. I also thought it might be nice to um, add a little shadowing where the head would block the sunlight going down onto the neck. Um, and I had to be a little careful with this because you're going over, anytime you add moisture to watercolor, obviously you can reactivate the watercolor underneath it. So I just had to kind of pat a gray kind of color on there to add um, some shadowing on the bottom part of the neck, shadowing on the, the part of the neck that's right close to the face. And that gives it a little bit darker appearance on the bottom just adds up that shadow. One really nice thing about watercoloring in your Bible is that you can still see all of the words through the watercolor. Uh, it's hard to see on camera, but in person you can still see all of those words and that's that's really nice um, that that watercolor is, is translucent, transparent, where you can see through it. Hit it with a heat gun because I'm impatient and I want to be able to outline that pretty quickly. And so every time I read Hebrews 11, I, I long for a bigger, deeper, taller, just uh, more robust faith that, that I would really believe everything that God says. This is my favorite kind of pen that I use in my Bible. It's a Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen. Um, you can use them before water coloring because they do not react to water. They don't smear or smudge. They... Um, you can use them after watercolor, obviously, which is what I'm doing today. Um, and it, it just doesn't matter. You can use it either way. I love this pen. It's fantastic. So I could have drawn out my entire thing in this black pen and then watercolored it uh, because it's India ink. So if you have a pen that is India ink that does not react with water and you can do that, it's really quite cool. Um, so you don't have to be super, super careful when you're outlining uh, the pencil marks because, like I said, that white space is really nice in watercolor uh, around the lines. It's perfectly fine. Add a little bit more definition in the hair, and I'm going around the face, and it's, it's okay if you uh, don't have a super, super steady hand. One really nice, and I didn't do it on this one, but... One really nice uh, kind of trendy thing right now that I'm seeing a lot of people doing is double lining things. So if you don't have a real steady hand, take a, 
but take your pin and double line. Oop, there on top of the ear, I'm doing a little bit of that. Uh, do some double lining of something and it just looks like you intended to do it that way. It's kind of a, a fun look that's uh, trending right now. It looks good. Lots of people are, are doing that. Adding a little bit of definition with these lines as well um, to the hairs on the giraffe. Uh, a giraffe has, they have kind of coarse uh, hair and they have and it sticks up in different places. <laughs> They're kind of funny looking animals. Uh, I love giraffes at the, when we go to the zoo uh, and to see pictures of giraffes. They, they, they move in different ways and they're kind of fun to watch. Um, reach up the, to the trees and grab a leaf and, and eat it. They're, they're kind of awkward animals and sometimes I feel awkward too so I can, I can relate to um, the giraffes. They're, they're kind of fun. And then I'm just going to go over the, the pencil that I've already uh, drawn there and add in a black pen to make that really uh, pop or stand out. There are actually times where I really, really like the look of just the pencil in my Bible. And um, so if you're just starting out and all you have is a pencil, get that pencil to work for you. <laughs> you can do actually beautiful art, uh, word art in the columns of your Bible with just a pencil and it can be really, really striking. Um, you notice on faith, I didn't just create didn't just go over the lines there. I then darkened any down stroke on the cursive. So if you pay attention to which ones of your strokes go down uh, from the top of the page to the bottom of the page, basically, um, then um, add another layer to that, make it a little bit darker, wider um, stroke, then it makes it look kind of like calligraphy. Um, a similar thing is happening on these letters. My pen actually caught on one of them and it made it look uh, darker and so I had to darken all the down strokes on my on my word taller after that to make them work together <laughs> and not look really strange and then here we have um, then your fears and looky there nobody's perfect I just accidentally like made a sideways mark on that so that's okay it's not super bad <laughs> and even if it would the journey to create the page is more important than the art is anyway, right? So what God does in us as we spend time in his word is far more important than how the art turns out on the page. We're his masterpiece. So there you go. This is basically my first page for the Bright Bible. And I think um, that you can see it's a really fun project. You ought to go over to the Illuminated Life Dot org uh, and Jillian over there she kind of runs the Bright Bible tour that where the Bright Bible tra travels around and sign up it's it's a fun project to do have a great day don't forget to like and subscribe thanks so much